The key for this question is that when the wheel is rolling without slipping, the friction, or more precisely, the static friction between the wheel and the ground cannot exceed the maximum static friction, which is mu s times the normal force. So that's the limitation on it. And the key, the key to solve this problem quantitatively is to realize the relation between this friction and the force that you pull on this wheel. So there are two things. There are two equations we can write down. One is for the motion horizontally, and one is for the rotation of the wheel. So this wheel, for rolling without slipping, rolling without slipping, this criteria force that the speed of the wheel equals to the radius of the wheel times its angular velocity. Now, for the speed of the wheel, it is governed by Newton's law, but the total force is not just the force here, but also the friction. And the friction will cause a torque that generates the angular acceleration for the wheel to catch up with the speed. So this is the torque, which is the static friction times radius equals the moment of inertia times the angular velocity. And we have, so we have three equations and we need to solve for acceleration or we want to relate the force and the frictional force. So there's the two unknown we need and we have we have two unknown and then we can relate all of them. So we have so the first step is to replace the angular velocity with velocity. This shows us the angular velocity is velocity divided by r. So this is i r over 1 over r dv dt. Good. And now we can replace dv dt with this formula. So we have fs times r equals i over r times f minus fs divided by m. Here I just plug in the formula for dv dt from here. So now the entire equation has only uh, this entire equation will relate the capital F and the friction, which is the relation we want. We get, now before we move on, let's plug in the formula for moment of inertia. Moment of inertia of this wheel will be, uh, will be the <coughs> linear density times r squared, and dm is 2 pi r dr. So linear um, surface density times the small area is the dm, and we have r squared, 0 to r. We have m divided by r squared for the surface density. And then we have integration of r cube dr. We have 2 pi here, so we should have 2 in, in here. 0 to r, and that will give us 4 r squared to m r to the fourth. So we have 1 half m r squared. Good. So for this disk, the moment of inertia is 1 half m r squared. We can plug that in so that we have fs. Let's get r and m over here equals 1 half m r squared f minus fs. So we can eliminate the m r squared and then we get 2fs equals f minus fs f equals 3fs or in the other way around the static friction down there will be 3 half the will be a third of the force you pull. So if a static friction needs to be smaller than mu s times n, which is mu s 
the mass of the real time gravitational constant and this equals to one third f and then the force need to be smaller or equal to 3 mu s and g. Now the acceleration is determined by f minus fs so a times m should equals to f times uh, minus fs. fs is just one third of f so it will be 2 over 3 f and it should be smaller or equal to 3 over 3 this thing so 3 mu s and g that will be 2 mu s and g so now we have that the accelerations should be smaller than 2 mu s times g so therefore if we plug in if the wheel starts from rest then we know that the distance that it can go through is one half a t square and because t is so then we can get that t should be okay so because this thing the acceleration is smaller than this volume so this thing should be smaller or equal to mu s g times t square so therefore the time it takes to travel the distance should be related to this value. It takes at least this amount of time to measure this distance. And the bigger the standard frequency is, the shorter the time you can measure the distance.